beautiful music. I could sit here and listen all morning. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody. All, all, what, 20, <laughs> all of you. Well, this is our, our 14th Sunday after Pentecost, and we have, we're celebrating Labor Day weekend, so as you may have noticed when you came in, there's a wide array of things on the table back there that represent different kinds of labor. And we are just um, going to kind of emphasize that today. So um, keep that in your heart and mind. And I, we have some announcements. Sarah. Good morning, everybody. Um, so this one did not make the list. So. Um, you might want to take notes. Um, our Tough Conversations workshop is coming up on Saturday, October 28th. We've got four different guest speakers who are all experts in their field who are going to come and talk to us about how you have those, those tough conversations. And um, for anybody who's ever dreaded talking to, you know, dreaded going home for Thanksgiving, anybody been there? Like, what are we going to talk about and how are we going to make it comfortable? Um, this would be a time to maybe brush up on some skills and start thinking about that ahead of time. It'll be from 10 to 2 that day. We will include lunch from Guac and Roll, which means the cost is $15, and that really covers lunch. We do ask that people register ahead of time because we have to let the caterers know how many are coming. And the registration's online, so you can find that on Facebook. But I know some of us are not comfortable with computers, so I brought mine today. I will be in the fellowship hall after church, and if you want to register, I can do that for you before you leave. So thanks. Thank you so much, Sarah. And our, Tammy, did you have an announcement, or do you want me to just go yes. ahead? Thank you very much. And I have a few announcements myself. They are in the bulletin, but in case you don't get them read, the Monday study group is taking Labor Day off. So tomorrow there will be no Monday morning uh, study group. And then after that, starting on September 12th, it will be known as the Tuesday morning study group, right? Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. Oh, Tuesday afternoon study group, okay. So if you participate in that, be sure to pay attention to that. And let's see here. The last really important one is regarding uh, Pastor, the Reverend Dr. Megan Hannah Manlove is being um, installed as our bishop on the 7th of October. And it's in the afternoon, and there will be a reception afterwards. So they really want to know who all is going to be there? So you need to RSVP that you're coming. And that, all, that information is also in the bulletin. So just take a look, and I guess we'll begin our service at this time. And in your booklet, we're going to start at, with the red hymnal at pages 94 through 96. <coughs> that's, that's at the beginning of the hymnal, page number. a moment. One moment. We're helping someone get ears to hear. We begin with the confession and forgiveness on page 94 of the Red Book. Please rise as you are able and face the font as you're doing. The Holy Spirit calls us together as people of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to help people come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through your Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is in the red hymnal, uh, hymn number 879, For the Beauty of the Earth. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We'll continue with the Kyrie. 
on page 203. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son. We choose the path of suffering. Who chose? I'm sorry. Who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world? Humble us by His example. Point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow Your commands through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from the 15th chapter of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribu excuse me, retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? <clears throat> Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, 
Thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you, to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Word of God, word of life. Please join me in reading Psalm 26 responsibly as printed in your bulletin. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second lesson is from the 12th chapter of Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Rejoice in hope. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, Blessed word of life. The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 16. Glory to you, o Lord. From that time on, 
After Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. And just to check, the sounds good, right? Because <laughs> I'm trying to do both. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's a small, small but intimate crowd this morning. Um, I don't know about you, but today's readings are not going to let me walk away feeling good about them, right? It's the kind of, um, kind of day where we're forced to wrestle with what we hear. And if there's anything that we can say about today's readings, it's that the life of faith is hard. We started with Jeremiah, and if you remember in Jeremiah chapter 1, he has this beautiful call experience, right, where God's telling him that he was created for a purpose and that God knit him together in his mother's womb. And there's this sense of God's investment in his life and God's movement and care. He's told that he has a mission and that God is watching over him. And it's beautiful and poetic and inspiring and one of those ones that people like to put on plaques in their, on their walls, right? But by chapter 15, our boy has had it. Like, he is just done. Jeremiah has lived faithfully for 15 chapters, but it's cost him. He's done everything right, and still, life kind of sucks. And at least in Jeremiah's opinion, and he's probably right. It's kind of God's fault. Um, Have you ever felt like that? Maybe, like, I've done everything right, and somehow life is still not coming together the way I feel like it was promised to me. Now, um, just to be clear, Jeremiah will continue on with another 40 years of faithful service, right? He's going to be faithful for the rest of his life, but it's important that we look at the lives of the, when we're looking at the lives of the faithful, that we don't just gloss over these moments because we don't go through life without having doubt and anger and wondering why God isn't making it better. So it's important that the heroes of the faith remain human. Otherwise, we'd, like, who would we look to in those moments when our life is hard to? A faithful life is worth the effort, but it isn't easy. And if anybody else can attest to that, it's Peter. Peter, in today's reading, uh, like, he, he has it pretty rough, right? I mean, like, talk about a rebuke. Get thee behind me, Satan. Not something you want to hear from the mouth of the Messiah. And it's especially brutal because in the verses just before this, Jesus is praising Peter. Peter proclaims that Jesus is the Messiah, and Jesus says, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. And you're going to be the rock upon which I build my church, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It's got to be a bit of an ego high, right? And then the next thing you know, it becomes, get thee behind me, Satan. So a bit disorienting, a little bit of whiplash, especially because I kind of think Peter took to heart the loose 
whatever you loose on earth will be loosed and whatever you bind. I kind of think he's trying to practice that, taking Jesus aside and being like, God forbid it, you know, like I'm binding that. And then he gets, he gets told off for that. To go from thinking that you have everything figured out about this life of faith thing um, to realizing that you know absolutely nothing had to be, had to be a blow. Can you relate to Peter? I think I can a little bit because the life of faith is hard. And the moment we think we have it figured out, at least for me, is when I tend to fall on my face. Um, I had a moment about a month ago, not, not a get thee behind me Satan moment, but one that kind of, um, for me, encap encapsulated that bit of whiplash. And so I would like to share that with you today. So it's a gorgeous day, a couple days before I'm going back to work, so I'm really soaking in that freedom, right? Last days of summer. And I was running around doing some errands and just enjoying being out. And I was listening to a podcast where these Bible scholars were discussing the week's readings because, yes, I am just that big of a nerd. Um, and so I'm driving, and I get stopped at the light by Costco, just as they're discussing Romans 8, 38, and 39, which says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And as I'm hearing this, I am seeing a man on the corner holding a large full color banner that he has stretched over a PVC pipe frame that he must have made. Um, and it is obvious that he has put time and intention and a significant amount of money because full color banners that are about this big, you know, that's not cheap anymore. Um, so he has put some intention into this sign of his. And on the banner, there's a verse from Isaiah that, let me be clear, is taken out of context and is not supposed to be used the way he's using it. But it pronounces judgment, and it's paired with a full-color photo from the Pride Parade, with the intention very clearly being that um, he is proclaiming judgment on the LGBTQ IA community um, in the name of God. So what I am seeing in that moment and what I am hearing were so disjointed that there were about three different conversations that started happening in my head all at once. Um, it might be helpful at this point to know a few things about me first. Um, I have always had sort of a deep physical aversion to the whole standing on street corner soapbox evangelism vibe like not my cup of tea. Uh, usually my first thought is like, don't make eye contact and keep going. Um, I have to admit that my stomach started to sink before I had even begun reading this guy's banner. Um, I also tend to get really annoyed when people misuse scripture because again, big nerd, remember? <laughs> um, but I really love the book of Isaiah in particular, so misusing Isaiah really gets under my skin. And while I rarely argue with anybody on my own behalf, um, something in me is compelled to stand by people who are being actively hurt, especially when their torment is being done in the name of God. So in that moment, I was, I was pretty triggered. Um, I could kind of feel the anger tightening up in my gut um, thinking about people who were just going to be going about their day and then be ambushed by an image of a God who detests them. And I'm looking at this man who I am embarrassed by and thinking, like, don't you know? Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Not life, not death, not angels or demons, not our identities, not our sexualities, not being gay, not being straight. Nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God. Like, I wish you knew that. I hope that the people you are condemning 
know that. And that could have been a really self-righteous, like, gold star kind of moment where I walk away pretty self-satisfied with myself. Um, Except that I was also having two more conversations in my head. And the one that really kind of knocked me back on my heels was, Sarah, like, don't you know that nothing can separate us from the love of God? Not heights, not depths, not standing on street corners or misusing scripture. He bears the image of God too, this person who you don't want to make eye contact with. And nothing in all creation can separate him from the love of God. So, okay, it wasn't as harsh as get thee behind me, Satan, but um, it was apparent that I don't have this whole life of faith thing figured out. And the third thing going on in my head at this exact same time, that's kind of scary in there sometimes, (laughs) um, was a bunch of observations. Observations about how reactive I was being, how it felt like I had to choose sides and that justice could only be served by choosing sides, that there were only two sides to choose from, and that choosing meant pointing the hatred and hurt and anger in a different direction rather than giving it up altogether. That there wasn't room enough to transform those into something truly redemptive. Like, I couldn't imagine a life of faith um, that, like, a life of faith, what it would look like in that space, because it was too hard. And yet, I thought, oh, love, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ. Not the present or the future, nor any powers. Not getting it right, like Peter did when he was proclaiming Jesus to be the Messiah, or getting it wrong, like he did when he told him he didn't have to die. Not your first reaction, not your second reaction. Nothing in all of creation can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So then, of course, we have to ask why. Because we aren't the main characters in the story, thank God. Not you or me or Peter or Jeremiah. It's been God's story all along. A God whose love is relentless and tenacious. A God who lavishes love upon all of creation. A God who, thank goodness, is exceedingly patient with us all. It's God's story. And God chooses to love us. Imagine that. In our reading from Romans today, we get this beautiful image of what a faithful life ought to be marked by. A life of genuine love that has enough room in it to embrace both those who are marginalized and to serve and care for those we label as enemies. And that is not easy. I think that both Jeremiah and Peter would give witness um, that the life of faith never is, right? I'm not sure that my life is always expansive enough to embody what Paul is asking of us here. Um, At least not yet. But what I can do today is acknowledge that God's love is like, or what God's love is like, and commit to being relentless and tenacious and generous with the love that I do have. I can let my love grow and be challenged and stretched And when my love falls short, I can trust that even that doesn't separate me from the love of God. Following Christ is hard. We will never really master it. And our most dangerous moments will be the ones where we think we have it all together. The life of faith is hard, but it's not dependent on us. And I don't know about you, But for me, um, that is good news enough to sustain me for another day, maybe another week. (laughs) So may you encounter the richness of the love that God offers you this week. May you find God to be relentless 
and generous and tenacious in loving you. And may you come to trust that love. And may that transform the way you love others and how you encounter the world. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 798. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended. Remembering the caring and generous work of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy of, at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses. Open your children to receive your truth when we stumble. Merciful God. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Assist us to be good stewards of your creation. 
Challenge us to live humbly and peacefully as part of your world. Merciful God. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Put people's well-being and safety before greed. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to people and places mired in conflict. Merciful God. God of deliverance, remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who pers persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. Merciful God. God of justice. Equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Merciful God. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor. Nurture us in faith until the day we join in their heavenly song. Merciful God. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. You may be seated. We'll continue with our offering. And our hymn. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Rise as you are able. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Gathered at the Lord's table, our congregation remembers each week that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is the supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The same bread and cup shared in our community each week are here given for you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Behold what we are. We are the body of Christ. The, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome at Christ's table. You may be seated.
us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today we're going to do something just a little different. Um, at the end here we have a blessing of hands. Um, I will be reading the blessing, the first sentence, and after, O Holy One, um, Steve will lead your echo. You will echo the same thing I said back to me. Look at your hands. Notice their power and gentleness. Let us bless these hands together. I invite you to say each phrase after me. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Blessed be the hands that have touched life. Blessed be these hands that have touched life. Blessed be these hands that have nurtured creativity. Blessed be these hands that have nurtured creativity. Blessed be these hands that have held pain. Blessed be these hands that have held pain. Blessed be these hands that have embraced with passion. Blessed be these hands that have embraced with passion. Blessed be these hands that have tended gardens. Blessed be these hands that have tended gardens. Blessed be these hands that have closed in anger. Blessed be these hands that have closed in anger. Blessed be these hands that have planted new seeds. Blessed be these hands that have planted new seeds. Blessed be these hands that have harvested ripe fields. Blessed be these hands that have harvested ripe fields. Blessed be these hands that have cleaned, washed, mopped, scrubbed. Blessed be these hands that have cleaned, washed, mopped, scrubbed. Blessed be these hands that have become naughty with age. Blessed be these hands that have become naughty with age. Blessed be these hands that are wrinkled and scarred from doing justice. Blessed be these hands that are wrinkled and scarred from doing justice. Blessed be these hands that have reached out and been received. Blessed be these hands that have reached out and been received. Blessed be these hands that hold the promise of the future. Blessed be these hands that hold the promise of the future. And blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Blessed be the works of your hands, O Holy One. Please rise as you're able. The God who speaks across the cosmos and in the smallest seed, bless and keep you and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Our closing hymn is on... Page 710, Let Streams of Living Justice.
this morning, Pastor, I forgot to mention, Pastor Barbara is away on a family celebration, I think a wedding, and so she's traveling, so keep her traveling, um, mercies, and in, her, in your prayers. So go ahead, Steve. Go in peace, share the harvest. Thank you.